did a lot of good things for for a little bit in that Houston game, but uh, uh, the second half, uh, uh, we we uh, we we just uh, I don't want to say came apart at the seams, but we we lost our emotional focus, and we allowed uh, uh, their uh, we allowed uh, the environment, the other team's emotion to impact us, and um, and and we we got to be better than that because we're not a young team. We we, we should handle that moment better. Uh, with all that said, though, um, uh, we've played three really good teams. I mean, we've played uh, Liberty, who's got the second most wins over the last two years in college basketball and returns all its guards. Uh, Tulsa returns all its guards. And um, uh, they, they won 45 the last two years. Um, Houston. Uh, the third most wins over the last two years uh, behind Gonzaga and Liberty and returns its guards. And I get the fact that a couple of them didn't play, but it's their guards that are on their team still played last year. And they're, they're you know, they're part of their winning culture. And now Walford got two, two uh, senior guards that, that have uh, played major, major minutes uh, during their careers. And uh, so, uh, and they've won 49 games over the last two years. So, um, it's another hard game uh, that we're we're facing, and uh, uh, but that's that's why we schedule these kind of teams. It's it's why we do this. Uh, we uh, we believe, and I've said this my whole career here, that uh, it's all about league. Uh, that's what I believe in. Uh, you you got to win non-league games. You can't go to Houston and fight your tail off and come close. That doesn't work. Uh, you got to win non-league games. But at the end of the day you better win in your league. If you don't, you got major issues and you're not good enough to win in March. So uh, the, the plan's still in place. Uh, we're still excited. Uh, and uh, we just, uh, we got to go out and, and win and figure out a way to get on a little bit of a run and, and win two, three, four in a row to feel better about uh, how we're doing things and who we are. Dave, if you want to go ahead. Hey, Frank, thanks for doing this. Um, looking at your first three games, how are you with uh, the defense that your guards are playing? Yeah, I think defensively we're, we're uh, as a whole, we're not playing bad. Um, uh, there's two, ha we've had two bad halves of basketball. We've played three games at six halves. We've outscored real good opponents and held real good opponents below their averages in four of the six halves, but we've had two bad halves, a bad first half against Liberty, bad second half against Houston. And, and those two halves have cost us. So uh, we, we've got to uh, clean up some stuff. The one thing that I'm not happy with defensively right now is our pick and roll defense. I, I, I think our, our ball screen defense is uh, inconsistent at best. It's, it's, oak, it's pretty good when it's easy. And I'm not talking about the other team. I mean that, that, uh, the way they get into it is simple. Uh, once they make us move defensively and they make a sustained effort, then our ball screen defense gets really bad towards the end of the shot clock. And uh, uh, so we, we've got to be a lot better there. Uh, but I mean, Houston's a, a pretty darn good team. And, and, you know, going into that game, I, I, it wasn't my concern because it's what we do as a team. But you got to rebound the ball. If not, you got no chance against Houston. And we we did more than – I mean, we held our own on the glass. We gave up some offensive rebounds in a crucial part of the game in the second half. Uh, that That's part of defense. That's why I went there with this. Uh, but what created those opportunities for them was our bad ball screen defense. Uh, it created rotations, and now you got separation. So now it makes boxing out and rebounding that much harder against a team like them. Joe? Coach, through three games, what have you learned about your rotations? I know in the beginning of the year, you said, you you know, the team, there was so much talent around you guys. It was hard to figure out which lineups work best just through three games. Are you starting to figure out what combinations on the floor work best and how's that process developing for you guys? Yeah, well, you know, Joe, that big cloud that just sits over our campus that just kind of dumps on top of us as soon as a male sport starts being played. You know, it started two weeks before uh, the week leading into our first game. Uh, first, it was Trey Hannibal with a rolled ankle. Then the next day was Jalen McCreary with a concussion. Uh, so, you know, we go into 
um, the games in Kansas City and Trey missed two practices and, and, and Jalen didn't practice at all that week and got cleared the night before. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, then uh, we turn around and in the second game in Kansas City, Seven sprains his knee. If Seventh, seventh got to practice on Friday, the day before the Houston game, if we had played any day before Friday night, he would not have played. Um, so, it, uh, you know, those are, and the reason I share that with you is because those are three guys that going into that week when we're going to Kansas City, were three guys that were playing at a high level in practice. And Trey's kind of getting himself back into it. Jalen had a fairly good week of practice last week. Jalen's, Jalen, there's some guys that, that don't need a lot of reps in practice. Jalen's one of those kids that needs as many reps as possible. And, and he hit his, his learning curve when he gets actual repetition is real good. So I've got to put him out there and get reps for him to be comfortable with stuff. And um, um, so he had a better week last week and that's why he played a little better against Houston. Uh, so those are three guys that right now, I know we're going to play major roles on our basketball team and, and Trey Hannibal's back to being hundred uh, percent. Jalen is hundred percent. He just needs, he needs to have a good week of practice. You know, uh, yesterday he was okay. He needs to be real good today and tomorrow. Uh, and then seventh just got to get back into the flow of things. He's, uh, uh, you know, seventh has made some first half, like created two loose balls. I mean, came up with a loose ball. So you guys view, I shouldn't say you guys, that's not fair. The average person looks at seventh woods and they think that his impact for us winning is scoring 25 points because in high school, he averaged 25 points. He came in here. And he took two charges, created two loose balls, came up with a loose ball that no one else on our team would have come up with in the first half. Those are winning basketball plays. That's the presence and the, 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 the personality that he's brought to our team. Uh, then in the second half, um, uh, he, he and everyone else, we were not as aggressive. And all we did was foul. And, uh, but but that's, that's where we're at, Joe. Long, long-winded answer because uh, I do believe that we have – uh, you know, up to Trey Anderson, Javon still trying to figure stuff out. And, and I, I need to figure out a way to, to get him some repetitions in a game uh, so he can get his feet wet and get his confidence going. Uh, Cause he's a very talented young man. Um, but, uh, but we just have not had that opportunity right now. Colin. Yeah, Frank, I think against Houston, you guys did some switch some things up defensively. I saw some some zone, some trapping maybe on the, the boundary there. Just is that indicative of what you feel this team's good at? Or, or was that just part of the game plan for Houston? Kind of where do you feel this team's defensive identity is right now? Uh, yeah, well, a two, two sided answer for you there, Colin. That's my plan going into the season. Then we got hit with the injury bug and now. Uh, we got three major rotation players that are all part of that pressing mentality. Trey Hannibal, Seventh Woods, Jalen McCrary that play through athleticism and speed um, that all of a sudden all miss practice time. And, uh, and, and then as they're getting back in, we're playing teams that have very experienced backcourts. So you got to be careful with extending your defense against experienced backcourts because they know what's coming and they don't pair they don't play fast they you know when you when you play in experienced guards and you press them what you're trying to do is get them to play faster than they want to play or pass the ball to places that they don't need to be passing it to experienced guards don't make those mistakes and that's kind of what we've been playing against so uh we we uh i've been a little more careful because of those two things uh, but yes mixing up our defenses playing a little bit uh uh, playing zone defense is not as easy as advertised. Uh, playing zone defense requires repetitions, requires players that communicate uh, because you're, you're, you got to help each other on uh, who's moving from my space to your space and, and, and what side of the floor, you know, who's guarding two guys instead of one. And uh, so if you're, if you're not communicating, you're not a good zone defensive team. You're not a good team, period, but really, really makes playing zone even harder. Uh, so that's, that's one aspect where we, I don't think we're as good as we need to be right now as our communication facet. Um, and, uh, somewhere we, we have to get a lot better. 
And the better we get at, I think we can end up becoming a real good zone team. Ben? Uh, hey, Frank, when you're looking at Wofford, obviously you haven't played them uh, in a couple of years. And how different does this Wofford team look compared to a Mike Young team in terms of sort of their style and their personality? Uh, the, the style and personality are very similar. Hmm. Um, uh, the difference is that he's got some young guys hmm. uh, on the front line specifically. Uh, you know, when we played them two years ago, uh, they, they, they whooped us pretty good. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we, as a staff, we were just talking about that earlier this morning, um, uh, going into that game, Justin Minaya tore up his knee the day before the game, Keyshawn Bryant, um, uh, did not practice all week, got cleared the morning of the game because of a concussion. Uh, and then we got Trey Campbell, who's a first year guy with us trying to figure out, you know, five games or six games into the season, how we play. And A.J. Lawson, who was a freshman, and he had no idea what being in college was all about. And we played a team that 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 had unbelievable depth on the front line and good players. The, the one young man that's at Virginia Tech right now uh, that everyone's raving about, he was their third best big guy on that team. Um, you know, and uh, so um, they're, they're a little younger on the front line. Uh, they got a young man, a young man off the bench called Godwin and a young man from Whale Branch High School. I forget his name right now uh, here in the state. Um, uh, Pringle. Uh, they're both freshmen, true freshmen. That's who comes off the bench on the front line. And then the, the two starters. One of them's a sophomore. Um, and one of them's a third year sophomore who's a transfer. Uh, so, um, they're, they're a little younger on the front line, uh, but, uh, uh, but they, they, they've got a young man who's a red shirt freshman who I think is going to be a phenomenal player for them. I forget his name right now, number 13. Uh, mm -hmm. and then they got their two guards, Storm Murphy and, uh, 21 Lovewell. I, I, I'm having a bad morning name day right now. Jesus. <laughs> uh, I, I just finished meeting with my staff for two hours. So it's. I'm visiting with you guys and I'm a little brain dead, but, uh, uh, but that's the, the styles. Uh, I, this is what I, uh, this is to answer your question clear. When we played them two years ago, they played through the post more than they do now because they had big guys that were seniors and big and strong and, and they threw it in the post and could score. And then they'd run all their screens for Fletcher McGee and the guard from Memphis that graduated last year that killed us that game. Uh, they run all kinds of screen actions uh, from post entries. They don't do that as much right now because their big guys are so young. Mitch? It was obviously, um, you talked about the second half from this game against Houston. Do you feel like this team is, uh, and your closing unit is, is on the level you want the cohesion to be, the communication? That you want it to be, or do you feel like you guys still have another level you can tap into as the season starts to progress? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not concerned with, with, uh, um, there's not a, the, we did a bad job in the second half against Houston. We allowed the emotion of the, they're, you got to understand, they've won 60 games the last two years. Winning is part of their DNA. Their, their head guy is not on the sideline. So those kids don't, they don't like being down. They were up 20 against Texas tech. They were up 20 against Boise state. And all of a sudden they're at halftime, they're down. You know, they don't like to lose. They don't do that. I, it's no different than our guys. So they're at home. They came out the second half and they, what they did, they took it up a level. The physicality of the game went up. The, the aggression with which they did things went up and we did a pretty good job for about, eight or nine minutes of sustaining that moment of the game. That's what winning teams do at home. And, but then we had a three, four minute spurt where we just gave in and, and we, we had some bad fouls. We had some bad offensive possessions. Um, you know, we, 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 we just didn't handle that moment real good. Uh, but, you know, closing against Tulsa against an experienced team, we closed that pretty good. Um, you know, against Liberty in the second half, once we got that first half out of the way, I understand we weren't in a place to win the game, but I thought we played a lot better. So um, we, we, we just, we got to stay the course. It's uh, there's no, um, uh, you know, we, 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 we got to figure out a way uh, to, 
play up to our capabilities for 40 minutes. Uh, the problem is that we haven't played anybody yet that kind of lets us do that. And we're playing experienced teams that have unbelievably winning, just like us. It, it's no different than us. I, I, I guarantee you, you asked Tulsa, they say, Ed, you know, we were playing well, but those guys wouldn't let us win because we got that same DNA. We just didn't handle it real good at Houston. We need to play at home thought? and we need to play well. That's we, we need to get comfortable with, with our team right now. That's what we're, we're trying to figure out. I was going to ask how excited are you guys to finally have a home game You've been traveling uh, for the first couple of weeks. So how does that feel? Great, man. Great. It's, it's, uh, uh, I mean, we're going to practice at the CLA. I mean, you know, it's, we, we really don't practice there as much as we used to once upon a time. Uh, so usually we practice there the day before game and our guys get all jacked up because they know that means game time at home is coming. Uh, so we'll be in there tomorrow for practice. And I know our guys are excited about uh, our guys like to play. That's number one. Number two, uh, get the opportunity to, to get a loss out of your system. And then number three, get the opportunity to finally play at home. Uh, they're, they're, they're excited about all three. Michael. Hey, Frank, um, that's actually a perfect segue in, into my question. Um, you know, the fact that you're playing at home now, I mean, you talk about the emotions, you know, in the first half against Liberty, second half against Houston, your guys kind of getting a little, a little tight. Um, the fact that you guys are playing at home now, practicing at home, what, what's sort of the comfort level energy that you're feeling from your guys now? And do you feel like you can kind of maybe avoid some of those issues now that you're playing at home and maybe, you know, feeling a little more comfortable, you know, being in Columbia. Yeah. I, I, we've all been around each other for a little bit now players. So they, they, they know me, I know them. Uh, I kind of know uh, what tickles them the wrong way and they know what tickles me the wrong way and vice versa. And um, so it's, uh, uh, I, I've got no concerns about our team right now. None. Uh, that we've got real good dudes and, uh, you know, uh, we just, uh, uh, we were, we had a great week of practice headed into Houston. I mean, we were on it. That's why we were, think about this. We're up four with nine turnovers and 11 missed free throws, 10 missed free throws in the first half. Um, uh, you know, we, we, you give a winning team the opportunity to stay alive. They usually, come back and they make you pay for not putting them down when you had a chance. And uh, unfortunately we, we messed that up, you know, and, uh, 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 but I, our guys are fun to be around, you know, and the, the only thing, Michael, that I'll say that's different this year than, uh, and I, I, this is what I wrestle with every night uh, when I put my head on the pillow and I try to find peace so I can sleep is our guys usually have an outlet family, friends, a date, uh, a party, even though it's the season, I, I, I want them to be human beings. Just stay away from the stupid stuff that they don't need to be around. Uh, but they usually have an outlet. Right now, they don't have an outlet. Right now, they don't have family. You know, it, they, you know, I'll pick on seventh since he's older and he's from in town. He don't get to drive to his house and hang out with his family after a bad day or a good day. He has to go back to his apartment and basically just be around the players all the time. Um, you know, so-and-so uh, has a bad practice and I'm all over him. He don't get to go around his girlfriend and, and just relax and kind of take a deep breath. And, you know, she says, ah, you know, Frank loves you. It's going to be okay. And then he comes back the next day in a good mood. You know, it's, it's, it's a little different right now. It's different for me, so I know it's different for them. You know, I don't get to go out with my wife to dinner or take my kids to a movie to get my mind away from the rigors of the next day of practice and games. So um, I, I know it impacts me, so it's got to impact them. And, and uh, uh, so I, I've got to make sure that I manage that component. And, um, uh, you know, and, uh, and then we got to be at peace, man. We, we got to, if we don't enjoy being around each other, this is the wrong year to, to be on the team. This team's pretty good about that. They, they enjoy being around each other. We just got to manage it the right way. Um, just sorry, I just sorry. wanted to follow up just uh, real, real quick on that. Um, 
do you guys, you know, because of that component, um, I know I was talking to Justin about how you guys did a little team like Thanksgiving kind of thing. And mm -hmm. I know AJ was talking about how they like to play 2K online and, and stuff like that. Do you guys have sort of activities or things that you guys do to try to, you know, foster that togetherness, you know, outside of just, you know, playing basketball? Yeah, before the season, we we tried to do some of that. But, but you know, Michael, here's the thing. Um, we usually do those things like uh, in community service. Uh, you know, we'll take, even in season, we'll take our kids to a school to read the kids. You know, it makes them understand that it's a little deeper than just how many points you scored last night. When you walk into a classroom and 12-year-old and kids are jumping out of their shoes because because you're a college basketball player in their community and you're actually there to read a book to them. It, it, none of those things are available now. Um, you know, going to some function somewhere. We can't do that right now. I bring them over the house where now they get around our coaches and our families and our children in an environment that's not basketball. Can't do that right now. So it, there's, there's a lot of the things that, that we're always trying to do, uh, we, we can't do. Uh, so it, it, th those moments that that you're talking about are pretty much resigned to uh, in our facility, uh, setting up some kind of meal and and us sitting at tables and just joking with each other for, you know, 30, 40 minutes. Uh, but then as soon as that moment's over, it's me shacked up in my house with my family again and them shacked up in their apartments with their teammates again and, and really nothing else. And uh, it, it's this th this year. You know, and it's not easy, man. Mental health for these kids is is, is a complicated formula because they've got no outlet right now. And if there's ever a year, you know, it, I'll say this, if, if fans, you know, and or media, you guys, average Joe, if you guys want to be really, really critical of me, go at it. But this is not the year to pound on the players. This is not the year, man. They're, they're, they're basically... Uh, they're, they're in a place where they're sheltered away from uh, their normal 18, 19, 20 year old lives so they can play basketball to make everyone happy. Um, and uh, uh, this is not the year to, 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 to overjudge good days or bad days. We should all celebrate the days that we all get to go out there and play. John? You know, what what do you like about what TJ Moss has done so far this year, and and what what do you see from him that's or helped him kind of elevate his game at least through the first three games from last year? Yeah, it's the same things he did last year, John. That's why he played. He he, you know he he's got a toughness with how he plays. Uh, he is completely connected to our structure. You know, it's uh, you, know, the, you, you don't exist in life outside of structure it, it's that 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 just kind of fly by night i'm talented and just do whatever you want to do that works for a day it destroys your family it destroys your team over an extended period of time it destroys your business if you're if you don't have structure within how you coexist with others tj's great in structure um he was a freshman last year man it kind of snowballed on him the ball would not go in the basket for him and, and he kept battling and battling. He was doing everything I asked him to do. That's why I kept playing him. And uh, now when the season ended, then he was able to kind of relax and gather himself and say, holy cow. And now he's worked really, really hard. Uh, he's created a little bond with Will Bailey. He's in the gym, you know, with, with these care hours. I, I think we get 20 hours a week. I rarely, rarely get past 18 hours a week. So that means that they're two hours a week for every player to be able to come in the gym with a coach one-on-one -on -one and just spend time shooting balls, watching film, whatever. And TJ and Will create a little bond and he comes in there with Will and spends, you know, half hour shooting two, three times a week um, just to, to see the ball go in the basket and repetition. That's what, that's what good Cinderish Dorn was freshman year would not do that. Would never come in the gym. So his ball wouldn't go in the basket. Didn't make him a bad player. He just didn't understand what he needed to do to become a real good player. Well, as he went through his career, he realized I need to come in the gym. So he started coming in the gym and guess what? Second half of his junior year and then his senior year, his ball went in the basket and 
And it's not a talent thing. It's a work ethic thing. And it's something that you learn as you go through the experience. TJ's uh, been great that way. Do you have any idea how that bond between him and Will formed so quickly? Uh, Will's just that kind of guy, man. It's, it's, that's one thing about my staff. Uh, I'm, 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 I don't like hiring ego guys, you know, ego guys come in and they just want to help out the, the one player that everyone talks about because they want to be that guy or they just help out the players that they recruit, uh, that, that I work really hard when I hire, not to hire ego guys, hire guys that come in and just want to be available. Uh, to, you know, Perry Clark used to have a great saying, he says, you know, anytime you hire somebody, you're just trying to add value to your staff. And, you know, some guys want to add value because they think they know more than the guys in place. Uh, some guys add value because they come in here and they fit where they're needed. And, and that's where, where Will's been phenomenal. He he's, he's, hasn't come in here to try and do Chuck's job or Bruce's job. He's trying to learn how we do things and then adding value where it was needed. And, 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 and Will's done a great, great job with, with that player relationship with all the guys. A couple more, Colin and then Ben. Hey, have you guys been bored? You guys been bored the last five, six days? You guys really haven't had anything to do, have you? I'm waiting to talk to you. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I just met with you guys five days ago. Got more, more guys on the call today than we did five days ago. You guys, this COVID stuff must be hitting you guys pretty hard. Just wait till the offensive linemen start rolling in. Then we're really going to be busy. Yeah, that's why wait, Phil see. hasn't asked a question. That's why Phil hasn't asked a question in two weeks. He, he got no idea who the third string offensive lineman is anymore. Frank, I will say that I did a uh, did pull a Frank Martin a little bit early in quarantine and shave my head. So at least we're a little bit. You didn't. Grew back. You got you, you got hair on your head. It grew back. It it does do that. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> I wish I had hair that grows as fast as yours. I'll say that. It's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> um, I guess I wanted to ask two questions. Um, I guess first, how would you evaluate your bigs um, through the first three games with Wildens, obviously, and Alonzo? And second of all, since the Coker exhibition got canceled, are you guys planning on adding any games in the non-con just kind of um, before things get started up with SEC? But like, kind of how does that work? Yeah, I'll answer the second one first that, that adding of a game uh yes we've we've had some conversations about trying to find a team and there's been some possibilities i am um uh, every day i look there's a new team that's in quarantine that's in you know pause or whatever it is that they're calling it you know whenever they they can't practice or play for you know seven eight days uh so i'm i'm uh, i definitely am not i'm not going to travel again until it's league play, uh, you know, so I'm not adding a game where we got to travel. Here's the catch 22. Our road games next year are already filled. So I can't bring in a team and do a home and home and go on the road next year. I can't do it. So it'd have to be a one-time deal. Uh, it'd have to be a buy game and, and trying to find someone that's available. That's also uh, willing to spend the money it takes for testing. Um, you know, it, it's a little bit complicated right now. It's not as simple as it sounds. We're not going to pay for other people's testing, um, you know, so they got to be willing to adhere the SEC testing policy, which means that they have to spend money for testing and um, to up, you know, update or take as many as we're required to take that kind of stuff. So it gets, it gets a little complicated. Uh, your first question about um, our bigs, uh, Wilden's Levesque is a much better player than he was last year. Uh, he's really, really trying hard. Uh, he just, he's, it, it, this is the battle of big guys fight. Some guys are naturally this way and it's awesome. Others are like Chris Silva was when he was young. They play with such physicality that then when you throw them the ball, they're too tight and you cannot play on offense when you're tight. Then, so now you're, 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 your decision-making is, is rushed and tight. Um, Chris got better at that as he got older, uh, you know, and that's Wilden's right now uh, is giving us a physical presence uh, offensively and defensively at the rim, uh, but he's too tight. He's got to learn how to relax when the ball's coming to him and he realizes it's not a physicality play. It's a scoring play. 
He's got to figure out a way to mentally separate those two. Um, Alonzo's got to give us more. I mean, uh, I, I've, uh, um, uh, he, he's had tremendous moments in practice and it had, you know, finished last year with a bang, uh, the way he was playing and it's this, the year has not started off well for him. Uh, so we've got to get him to play better. It, it's, uh, that's, I, um, uh, I've, I've got, I've got to figure out how to, uh, help him so he can play better, uh, play with more confidence, uh, with a greater degree of physicality. Uh, with, you know, his energy right now has not been good in games. And that's his responsibility. He's, there's a certain energy level he's got to bring that he has not brought. And don't ask me why, I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, and then Jalen is, is, you know, we just need Jalen to be in practice. Like, you know, it's uh, his freshman year, he give us two weeks of practice and then something get beat up because he plays with that reckless abandon. Or he throws his body around and he's not scared of contact. So then he gets hit and, or he gives a hit and he, so he's got to figure out a way to, to stay on the court. Uh, so he can be uh, more consistent with, uh, with his minutes in the game. Um, but uh, uh, we, we, our point guard play has to be better and our bigs have to be better. Those are the two. If you were to pinpoint me where we have to play better, those are the two areas that, that I've targeted on our team that our point guard play is not bad. It's got to be more consistent. Uh, and then our bigs have to play better collectively. Last question to Ben. Uh, hey, Frank, when you look at Keyshawn Bryant thus far, where, where do you kind of feel his game is? He is kind of emotionally, and you know, at the start of this season, looking at the numbers, it seemed like he picked up a little bit against Houston despite the fouls. But where do you kind of feel he is uh, overall? Yeah, it's uh, what well, key is just a matter of um, he, you know, he was a certain player his freshman year. He worked to get better. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't come out of the shoot right away last year because he's trying to do things in games that he's worked really hard to get better at away from games. Mm -hmm. And then by the end of the year, he started to connect everything and played really well. Mm -hmm. And now he spent whatever we were in quarantine, six, seven months, uh, really, really focused in on shooting the ball better. He shot the ball real well in practice mm -hmm. leading into Kansas City. The two days of practice before Kansas City, he did not shoot it well. Mm -hmm. And he kind of got his feelings hurt because of it. And mm -hmm. when I mean his feelings hurt, that don't mean he was a bad teammate. It means that he got frustrated with it, and then he was not as aggressive as he needed to be in the other facets of the game. Mm. Um, you know, he played like everyone else pretty good the first half against Houston, and then the second half he kind of eh on us a little bit. And but that was par for the course across the board. Um, his he, he's he's got the ability to make plays that no one else on our team can make defensively and offensively. All those plays are made because of his energy. Uh, we, we've he's he's got to play with a greater sense of energy for steals, for block shots, for disruptions, um, running the court, finishing at the rim, cutting when we're in half court offense. Not be so consumed with making a jump shot, but be more consumed with his cutting ability. Um, and then it's my job to to help him in his journey as he grows as a basketball player to to connect what he's gotten better at with game minutes um because it's not fair to him to work so hard in the off season and then me limit him to only do the things he did last year mm. uh it's it's a process it takes time and um you know and i'm real simple as a coach if you put in the time then i got to figure out a way to help grow you we just don't get to grow people and we don't have a spring season in football or the non, I don't know where you can fall baseball games and all that other stuff. Every other sport has an off season session where they play other teams football. They have a spring game amongst themselves, but that's different, but softball, baseball, volleyball, they all have off season five, six games against other schools mm -hmm. where you can do these things and no one keeps score. Nobody keeps track of who wins and who loses. So your players get the opportunity to, to, to work on these things in the game. Huh. Our, our guys don't have that. 
So when we do this, we do it. I have a responsibility as a coach to coach to win and coach to develop players. So it's two animals. It's not just one. Mm-hmm. If they don't work on their game, believe me, they're not doing it in a game. But if they spend time to make themselves better at something, then I owe it to them as a coach. Those kids believe in us to come to school here. They believe in us to work at things. I've got to figure out a way to manage that in a game so they feel comfortable with the stuff they're trying to do and and still win the game, but giving them more freedom and more growth as a player. And that, 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 that doesn't sound very complicated, but it's a hell of a lot harder to do than – than it is with us sitting around here talking about it. Uh, uh, but, uh, well, I, I appreciate it. And, you know, we'll be ready to go Wednesday. Uh, you know, and I just hope you guys uh, uh, all sleep well tonight uh, after, you know, three nights of chasing airplanes and, and, and trying to get scoops on uh, who that seven string offensive tackle is in the year 2026. Um, but uh, now that the world is back to normal, uh, I hope you guys uh, have a heck of a week.